Hey everybody, this is Patchy from Phoenixus.com. In this video blog, I'm going to be covering the ping of death. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because there's a lot of people just starting out hacking and have heard of it, but don't know exactly what it is. And they still think it's a useful attack today. You can go on YouTube and watch tons of videos of these little kids making batch files that send pings with random payload sizes. And that's just horribly incorrect. That's not what the ping of death is. The ping of death basically is crashing a computer by sending a ping also known as a IMCP echo request with a packet greater than 65,535 bytes and the reason why this causes a problem is because an IP packet can only go up to that size including the header which is about um, 20 bytes typically packets that are larger than the maximum size are fragmented into smaller packets which are then reassembled by the receiver a echo request um, is contained inside an IP packet with about 8 bytes of header information. Therefore, the maximum allowable size for a ping is 65,507 bytes. Fragmentation makes it possible to send a ping with more than 65,507 bytes of data. Typically, machines don't process the, the packets until all fragments have been received. When the machine tries to reassemble the packet, it causes an overflow in internal variables which leads to a system crash. Some vulnerable systems are Windows 95, Windows NT, Windows 3.1, MS-DOS, Mac OS 7, Solaris 2.4 and 2.5, and Linux versions less than 2.0.23. Modern operating systems are not vulnerable to the ping of death. Alright, I'm going to demonstrate the ping of death by crashing a Windows 95 computer. Alright, I'm just on the Windows 95 computer here and I'm just going to make sure that everything's connected to the network properly. Um, make sure it has an IP address in uh, Windows 95 there is no IP config, it's win IP config um, and also I'm going to check to make sure I can ping the, the router so it looks like everything's working properly now we can switch over to our attacking computer and uh, perform the ping of death I've uploaded some C code to uh, my website which will allow you to perform the ping of death Alright, I'm just going to download it. And, uh, so basically, this code will create a, a ping with the, a payload larger than 65,507 bytes. And it also allows you to specify the destination IP address, of course, and uh, the source IP address so you can spoof your, you can spoof where it's coming from. And I'm just going to use GCC to compile the code. And if you're doing this on backtrack, you'll notice you get some warning errors. Uh, it's alright, it'll still run. Alright. So I'm just going to run it, and uh, all I have to do is specify the Windows 95's IP address and then a source IP address, I'm just going to put the default gateway and the number of times you want to send the ping of death and I'm just going to put 15 just to make sure it crashes the other computer and before I run this I'm going to go back to the, the Windows 95 computer and start uh, a scan disk so just so you can see exactly when it crashes Alright, I'm just going to hop back onto the attacking computer and launch the ping of death attack. And you'll notice on the Windows 95 computer, as soon as I send this attack, everything just stops. The scan just stops, the little disk at the top stops spinning, everything just crashes, you can't do anything, it's completely fucked. I thought this was a little anticlimactic. I was hoping for a blue screen of death, um, but apparently it doesn't do that, it just stops working completely. And the only way to fix the computer is by doing a hard reboot. So 
Since we're on the topic of old IP attacks, I wanted to explain the Smurf attack. The Smurf attack is a type of denial of service attack that floods a target system with spoofed broadcast ping messages. In this attack, an attacker sends a large amount of ICMP echo requests with a spoof source IP address to an IP broadcast address. The routing device then delivers the traffic to all hosts, and the host will send an echo reply to the spoof address. On a large network, this will create a large amount of traffic destined to the victim computer, causing a denial of service. Nowadays, switches are configured not to forward packets directed to the broadcast address. So on most systems, this attack will not work. Now before I end this video, I want to enjoy the awesomeness that is Windows 95. One thing I remember about Windows 95 is they all had the best wallpapers, man. Look at this shit. Straw mat. Who the fuck wants their wallpaper to be straw mat? Oh yeah, and there's, they, have, they have these patterns. What the fuck? Does anybody actually use this shit? Let's check out the screensavers. This fucking screensaver was the best, man. I used to, when I was a kid, I used to watch this shit all the time. Just be amazed by the awesome graphics. Alright, next I'm just going to check out if anything exists on uh, the old Microsoft Internet Explorer. Wow. That is uh, amazing. Oh, at least, at least the video page looks better. Gotta love the 16-bit color. This is great. And of course, the biggest piece of shit of them all, American Online. I remember using this as a kid and trying to download a game that was like 5 megabytes. And it would take like fucking 10 minutes to do it. It's ridiculous. And everybody remembers the annoying modem sound that you have to listen to while it's connecting to the internet. Why the hell do they put the output of the modem and hook it up to the speaker. That doesn't make any sense. Why the fuck would they do that to us? And finally, after 10 minutes of waiting, you'll finally get a fucking phone number that works. You'll connect to the internet. The best part of Windows 95 is trying to shut the fucker down. I remember on my old HP computer, it'd take like 10 minutes before this piece of shit would finally turn off. Well, that's it for my video on uh, the ping of death and my rant on Windows 95. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you later.